then I did my due diligence and read hundreds of comic books and thought about the idea of how do you bring Spider-Man, which is 40 years of extraordinary comic books, one villain after another, after another, after another, exploits that take him all over the world and into different galaxies of the mind, the real world, the astral plane, the dream world. And I, I really was trying to think, how do we take this and bring it into a two or two and a half hour evening and try and encompass these various, these 40 years of comic books without just doing Spider-Man 1, Spider-Man 2, or Spider-Man 3, which is the idea in the movies, obviously, is that you pick one episode, one villain, let's do Doc Ock, or let's do the Goblin, or let's do the Lizard. But in this case, in the theater, what we're trying to do is the whole experience of Spider-Man. What does that mean? One of our biggest challenges is, of course, he has to fly. But he won't be singing in tights. I just want to make that very clear to the audience, that, that, that Spider-Man as Peter Parker, he sings. As Peter Parker, the regular guy, as soon as he becomes Spider-Man and he's got the mask and the costume and the, and, the, and the tights and the whole thing, he doesn't sing, he acts. He flies, he fights. He's, he's, he's much more of a physical character. First of all, how would you ever sing with one of those masks? You know, it would be rather amusing. So that, that was never, ever on the table. I've read about it. Oh, my God, can you imagine Spider-Man singing in tights? Ain't going to happen.